for Thailand, you know, people get really emotional. People are really, people love drama, love human faces, which for a long time, climate change and a lot of environmental reporting has lacked. Environments, environmental issues here often come as like, oh, it's, it's about saving trees, about saving wildlife and animals. And so people don't really see that human face to, to the stories, which, you know, we are beginning to get more of that of like natural disasters and people losing homes. And, and even for public media, that's, that's mainstream media, they, they report on natural disasters or, or irregular um, weather patterns, but they don't really make that connection for people. They don't really talk about it in like that climate angle but rather as isolated events. Environmental reporting just doesn't stop with mainstream media. I don't think that you need to focus a lot on the mainstream media, but you know, you're trying to, collect, uh, you're trying to build on communities. And then I think my tips, if, if you, if these young journalists already have their own place uh, in the environmental, then the mainstream media get uh, get to pick you because environmental issues are very uh, specific but on demand uh, you have the supply in that it's just that the mainstream media the national newspaper or the national broadcast hasn't really got out of its comfort zone saying that climate change is all about disasters there's a bigger barrier between academia and journalists and the public um, and I think breaking down that barrier so that you know, more um, scientists make themselves available to journalists, more journalists find these um, scientists in order to have in-depth conversations and not just like merely, you know, quoting one sentence that they write on a press release um, in ways that would engage readers more. I think that's very important. In the Philippines, there is a lot of um, NGO involvement um, and networks that are more vocal about these issues that journalists can quote and so we find more articles there that um, quote from a diverse perspective and community voices etc um, but then in other countries Vietnam included um, you're starting to see some NGOs but there's not enough diversity of them working in different fields um, and doing different things surrounding climate change. If there's more synergy and connection between um, these different Southeast Asian countries and maybe if journalists from Vietnam can access NGO voices from the Philippines, obviously it's still a different national context, but there are still some overlaps and hopefully that's a way um, to diversify and increase the quantity of sources that journalists can go to to approach climate change in different ways. Before you actually pitch to uh, an editor on a, or an online news site, basically think of it as you trying to win them. So you have to really build that kind of relationship. It's not really something that you say, okay, we have a free content in our hands, go and do it. It's not like that. You really have to build that kind of relationship. They have to trust you because there, there's actually that, um, uh, I, I want to tell this uh, er, to everyone a while ago, there's really that big, it's really important for, you know, journalists and maybe organizations to have that kind of relationship. A sound and good relationship will really go a long way. Among the younger generation of journalists, um, I think we all agree and we all realize the importance of climate change as a beat. To be honest, I kept saying that newsrooms should realize that climate change is going to be a major beat in maybe 10 years or so because we'll be facing all these different disasters and we'll, they will be ill-prepared. Newsrooms are not prepared to handle this kind of, they're not prepared to handle climate change reporting. So. We really need um, to be training people. Climate change is, you can link climate change to human rights. You can link climate change to corruption. You can link climate change to illegal mining or illegal extraction, not just natural resources. Environmental issues is about endurance. It's about resilience. It's about, you know, you're not getting tired of talking the same issues every day. If you can endure it, and then the next step is you have to improve. Try to think about what might make you stand out in that entire, um, you know, hundreds or thousands of people who pitch to them. Um, 
what about your land, natural landscape that makes it interesting and, and makes you, um, specifically you, the one who would be fit to write it? Um, and just that, like bringing a new perspective to the table, you know, whether it's it's with um, the local indigenous culture or like the weird climate patterns going on and dive deeper and say like, hey, look, this is a climate topic. And then the impacts that, that go so much deeper than that, like for example, rising sea levels. And then we hear a lot about, you know, rising sea levels, how that impacts homes, people will have to get displaced. But something I had found out in my, in my um, story was that the children in that area were actually also like, they developed social anxiety because um, the schools, they, with less students, like, rising sea levels and people move away so the school has less students so the, the the remaining students didn't really know like how to communicate with like a, a big crowd of students you know so that's like while that might in itself social anxiety might not sound climate related at all it's it, these i think these are the the angles that you can dive into that really bring out your story um especially in a pitch and if you like watch watch like Vox style videos, you know they, they always form such beautiful connections where it's like, what does what does mental health have to do? Okay, or like what does social anxiety have to do with rising sea levels? And that makes people curious.